Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Mixed Miles and Mile Man. Hope you're doing well. In today's video we're going to be looking at a, a Ransom Marquis um, carburetor I picked up. I picked up two Ransom Marquises, both extremely, extremely cheap. Um, but on closer inspections, one of them is a bit too far gone than the other. And I thought what I might do with this one here, I might just break it down for parts. Um, because parts are sort of scarce to come by now and there are certain elements within this machine that will stop me making it into, into, a, good, into a good restore video. Uh, so this machine is going to be um, stripped down into parts, sold on as bits and pieces and get my money back at least. I, I should do over my money anyway. But this particular carburetor is an AML. I think it is a 379 without looking at the numbers. The numbers will come apparent a bit later on. But these AML carburetors, you can't get them. You can't get these no more. Um, there are certain companies that sell certain parts and I believe the only bits they sell is the gasket, which goes on, on the top here and they sell uh, the needle float pin. And I think that's it. The rest of the carburetor, you just cannot get them, full stop. So this is, I think this is a 379121. Don't hold me to it, but I'm pretty sure that is a one. But it came off of a Ransom Marquis 20 inch with, with the BSA F12 sloper engine. And today's video is gonna be dedicating to how to take one of these older AML carburetors apart, clean it, put it back together, then put it onto eBay and get it sold on. Because these, these fetch really, really good money. Uh, if they're in good condition, and looking at this one here, it looks to be in fantastic condition once it's been through my carburetor cleaner and looking absolutely spanking. So that's what we're doing today. I've just got the kettle on now, I've got a bit of background noise because I want my water heated up for my ultrasonic cleaner. But before we get down and dirty, I do also have a letter came in just today. I've been down with shops and uh, this has turned up. <coughs> oh, cool. So these are uh, a sticker off of my good friend, Ebay Gom Eke Fompe. Um, my mate Rob's small engine repair, there he is there. He's just started his channel. He's been going a little while now, about two or three months. Just started, he's brand new. So go and check out Rob. He's given me a sticker there and uh, one for my little Riley boy who is at school today. I've got another envelope here. Just return envelope. Nope. I've uh, got a love letter here. To my mate Mick, I can't thank you enough for what you have done for me and the channel. You are a gent and a scholar. Uh, yours and Riley Boy's videos keep me going most days. I'll be ordering a few bits and bobs uh, for you and Riley Boy next week. Take care, brother, from Rob. So thank you very much, Rob. Much appreciated, buddy boy. Uh, Rob is referring to my Amazon wish list, and on the run up to Christmas, I have said if anyone buys me any bits and pieces, I should do an, a, a Christmas opening video uh, of some bits and pieces. So if you want to check out my Amazon wish list, it is down below in the pin section, or it's also in my um, about section as well. Go and check it out. If you want to wish me, Mrs. P or Riley Boy a happy Christmas, my Amazon wish list is there. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty, and let's look at this Ransom Marquis 20 inch um, carburetor, which is the AML 379, I think. Um, we'll get it cleaned up and I'll show you exactly how to strip it down, how to put it back together and then you can get it ready for either fitting to your own machine or if, you're, if you have found one that you want to strip out yourself and sell it somewhere else to make a few quid, then this video is for you. Right, so onto a sticker wall. There's a ransom marker that is being stripped because the cable's missing and the front roller is cracked and the cylinder looks like it is at the end of its lifespan. That's the reason why it's being scrapped. So let's uh, let's put you on, Rob. Uh, let's put you next to Mend It Man in the Naughty Boys corner, next to Jimmy the Mower and Bruce's shop and Grampy's workshop. There you go, Rob, there's you on your wall of fame. Please feel free to check any of these fantastic channels out. They're absolutely brilliant. Don't, uh, don't give them a miss, go and check them all out. They're all fantastic people. Well, apart from one or two, but that's another story. Um, so that's good. Let's get off to the bench and get this carburetor sorted. All right, so I'll just put the old, uh, the old heating on. Let's get a pair of gloves on the go. And we'll have a look. This carburetor, as I say, is gonna be sold on. Um, I need to, to recoup the money I bought the other two ransoms for and, and some, because they are worth a few quid now. Um, I don't like stripping machines down just for the sake of it. It's not what I'm about but this one is slightly poorer condition than the other, and um, I can't keep them all. So straight away, we've got the, your air filter, oil filler um, filter cap here. Nine times out of 10, these go missing. Okay, so I'm very lucky that it's got that inside. There's a little tiny screen in there that's got to come out as well very, very shortly. But first thing I want to do is remove this, this throttle uh, linkage off of this carburetor, which has got the, which has got the throttle um, connected to it, and that just slides on out. 
very it's a bit stick it's it's stuck in there but it will it will come out there it goes so that's that there keep that bit you don't want to throw it away because that you need it for part of the throttle what you can do is take the uh, the uh, throttle assembly off the top here that will come and done with a pair of pliers um or a pair of grips take that off unscrew that and then it will come apart okay because there's a cable just in there i might have to, i might have to loosen up the other end mick because the cable the throttle the throttle lever is broken this end as well so let's take it off the throttle lever all together there it goes let's get rid of that and that gives me a bit more slack to play with then there's a little tiny uh ball just here you see that like, just there that's where that is and what you want to do is get a little tiny pick or something similar and run your screwdriver or something down there just just to remove that there it is you see it there look just push it down and there it is there and then you can remove that out bring that up into that hole and it comes on out all together and then you can then remove all of this top piece that all comes apart <clears throat> put your spring back in and put your top hat back on top of your carburetor when you go to fit it back on okay so that goes in like that <clears throat> so that's a cable out of the way. Now I do actually have a, a new old stock one of those somewhere. I know I do. Don't ask me where it is. I don't know where it is. Um, you got your um, little tiny clamp system here, which is um, which holds your um, carburetor to your recoil assembly. That wants to come off as well. So we take that off. Okay, that's good. Uh, next thing you want to do is you, you've got your float and assembly in here. You want to remove that uh, off of off of this sort of here, but you can't do that until you remove this bolt at the back, or undo it at least. There's a little tiny bolt here at the back here. Let me get the right size. And I'm using an adjustable because it's old money. Just loosen that one off, like so. Let me get it undone, and I'll come back to it in two ticks. Right, with that nut now, that bolt now undone, you'll think it's not coming off the thread, but actually what it's doing, it's actually unthreading inside the carby here, okay? Now sometimes they stay in, sometimes they don't, but by unthreading it, your carby then comes off, and that's where your choke is sat there, you see? Okay, so that was just spinning. There's your choke. Okay, and all that does, that just look, uh, hooks up inside it. We'll get to that in a bit, okay? <clears throat> we'll stay with this side first. I've uh, got a little tiny, tiny O-ring there to take off. That's no drama. And then you've got a little tiny um, jet here. These nuts have to come undone as well, which will uh, open up for your float. Fortunately, everything seems to be moving quite freely at the moment, so I'm quite, quite happy with that. Loosen that one off. Now, what you want, you'll be very, very careful here because these are old, okay? These are really, really old and to snap these, uh, you, 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 you'll never forgive yourself, okay? Uh, to undo these is a screwdriver up the top, little flathead driver at the top here. Yeah, it's moving, good. Now, I haven't prepared this carburetor in any way, shape or form. This is as is, okay? So, there's a bit of water in this carb too, I can see. Now, the last carb I took apart of one of these, I had a bit of pitting just here, and uh, it was no good. The carb was, the carb was shot. I did repair it with some, with some stuff, but uh, it, has, it has still worked, but I don't, the carb is no longer complete. So as I say, these animal carburetors, they're getting a, they're getting a bit a bit sparse now. <clears throat> now you can lift this up very gently with a flatted driver just by just by prizing it. Sorry, but that, that was one of them nuisance calls from uh, from. Uh, would you like to have any of your stuff covered? Uh, it's already covered. Thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, we're going to carry on with this bit here. As I say, this is the uh, the float uh, chamber in here. Just pop that off very very gently. There might be a little O-ring or gasket in there. A little tiny paper gasket just there. Okay, so. Keep that, and inside here you'll find your, um, this has got a plastic um, float in here, but normally come with a brass one, so this has been upgraded. This has got a little, a little plastic one here, which is better, I suppose, in some ways. Just literally un loosen this one off, undo that very, very gently, because this is only brass, okay, and just start to slide that out. Now you might find that you'll, you'll get so far to pull it out and it won't go any further, okay? That is because this little tiny needle is recessed in. And all you have to do is take that out. Okay, 
there it goes, and out it comes out of the float, and it sits in the float just on that little tiny groove just there. Okay, so that float will now come out, and I shall show you. When you push it through the float, through the top, that's got to come out of there first, Mick. That's it. All right. When it goes through, that little tiny groove just hot, just about 10 mil down, that'll sit all the way in, and it just clips, bump like that. That's where it sits there. So I'm gonna leave that in place, okay? You don't have to separate up here, you just pull it out via this end, okay? So there's a jet in there as well, which we need cleaning up as well. Um, in fact, it's actually blocked. <coughs> um, over here, you've got another one. What I would like to do with these is to just count these. So on the, uh, on the float side, that's your, mi so that's your, that's your mixture jet. I'm going to unscrew that all the way out and leave that locking nut in place. There's a little tiny locking nut to set. We're going to leave that in place. That way, when we do it up, we know exactly where it is. That comes out like so. So that's a fuel mixture. You've got another one here to do. Oh, don't snap, don't snap. Oh, it might be a carburetor. It might be a vice job. I think it is. Let me put that in a vice. I just want to very, very gently put that into a vice and try and get that to, to, to free up. It's got to come out. It can't stay in there. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is just going to, just going to put it into a vice, a bit of, um, a bit of penetrating lube on there just to help it. But uh, this is where it could go 110% wrong for us. And we don't want that, do we? Let me put it into a vise, just give it a bit of a squeeze, just on the nut side only, and try and twist the whole carburetor rather than squeezing the carb. So I back to you in two ticks. Okay, just a little tiny squeeze in the vise, and literally put that in the vise that way up and just turn this whole carburetor, and now it, it remove, okay? It was well in there. It did not want to come out. Nice little screen inside there as well. And then you've got a, a, another jet there with a flat head piece on the top, but it also gives you the option to put a little tiny adjustable on there as well. Just to, just to free that. Now I'm going to rock it because there's, there's some resistance there. So rock it backwards and forwards because you don't want that to snap. As I say, you cannot get brand new parts of these anymore. They do not exist. So when you're taking one of these apart, you need to go on the side of caution. And it would be a shame to get so far um, on this and then find out that you've actually broken something because you've been a bit heavy handed with it. That's now running a bit better now. He says as he pulls it out and the end of the jet is snapped. No, nope, that's all in one piece, that's good. So that's all come out as well. So there's nothing more to take apart on this side of the um, of a carburetor, okay? So you've got a screen, which goes over the top, like so. That piece there sits in there, like so. That's where you can flood it from, and then all of that sits up inside there, like so, okay? Just just for those of you who need just a, another, another quick catch up, okay? So that's where that goes. <clears throat> so put that to one side for now, and then we move on to the choke side of things. <clears throat> now on this one here, this choke does come apart, okay, and all you have to do to do that is to undo this nut here, which will then allow this bolt to, to be removed, and then this little tiny rod that you see I'm, that I'm pulling out, all that does is sits on a circlip just there, you just feed it through, put the circlip on, and away you go. But in all, in all good intentions, there's, that choke is actually working absolutely A1. There's nothing else in there at all that would, that, that would give me any more reason to take that out. But all you'd have to do is put a, a, a spanner on here, one on there, take under this nut altogether, withdraw that, and this little tiny vent system will come apart. There's a little tiny circuit there, as I say, and then that little tiny rod with that nut undone will just come straight out. It's self-explanatory, but I will tell you, they can be a little bit of a fiddle to get put back together. So if it's working, and there's no jets involved in there or nothing in there at all that needs any more work, then why take it out? So it'll begin a bit of a clean. 
just so it runs better. Look, look, how, look how, how it's running better already. Bit of a clean, and that'll be fine, okay? Just in here, you'll find there's a little tiny screen. Let me get a dental pick. A little tiny, tiny dental pick or a, an emulsion tube remover tool will be fine. A little tiny screen in here, which is like the oil catcher. We put a bit of a drop of oil in here. There's one, a little tiny gasket. And then you've got these little tiny wire prongs that's come up as well. <coughs> and inside there, completely clean, okay? So that's that. That is the carburetor taken apart. You've got, to, you've got to do these bits here as well to take this, this extra fuel line off as well. Be careful there because they do snap as well. And if you, if you break those, I've seen those go for just 20 quid. Just one of those. <coughs> so, the, the entire carburetor now will begin the quick little petrol bath in the, in the Versa tray. Just to take off any excess. And what I'm going to do with the jets is just going to go around and just rim those jets very slightly. Just to open them up. Um, just so I know that they're free. Um, there is a small hole in that one. Uh, it could do just open up a touch. There you go, it is running. And it is blocked as well. So I'm just going to get my files or a little tiny brush. Let's go for a file, I think. But fortunately, back in the day, emissions weren't so much of a problem. So you could actually um, file these quite well. So I didn't think about climate change back in them days. A nice little file. That's actually blocked, there's something stripped in there. I can feel it. There it goes, big lump. See that big lump? That just come out. That's better, a bit of daylight now. Lovely. Now that doesn't come apart any more than that. that. That is all one piece, okay? And you can't buy those bits. Those bits are now obsolete. A lot of this is obsolete. So quick petrol bath and a bit of a cleanup, and then I'll go over to the uh, ultrasonic cleaner. Okay, Carbrat's had a bit of a petrol bath. I've got my ultrasonic cleaner now ready to rock and roll. <coughs> Pardon me. All I use in my ultrasonic cleaner is just water straight out of the kettle. And I then you put about two or three capfuls of white spirit straight into my... Uh, into my uh, water just to act as a, as a degreaser cleaning agent. In goes a carburetor. I want to put the float in as well. That wants to be a bit of a clean, so I'm just going to try and trap my float underneath. Or what you can do is I've got a pair of these which are called uh, clam shells, used for, used for tea strainers. I use those and all my small bits and bobs, all the bits you want to be cleaned, you can then fit into one of these clam shells. Uh, that'll do for that one. And they also have, they also come with a slightly smaller one as well. Just so you don't lose none of the individual pieces that are quite important. Is that going to fit in there? Yeah, it fit in there lush. That won't. So you've got any gaskets, anything like that, we you're not quite sure about, you can put these inside these little clamshells. You can find the, all these bits and pieces that I use, you can find these in the comments section of my video under the tools that I use section. Okay, you'll find them in there. <clears throat> There's little direct links, and they just hang onto the side of a basket, which is quite nice. So they're out of the way. Um, I've got that bit there, which I want to put in as well. I just want to remove that <coughs> off of um, off of there. That should be loose already, Mick. It is. Yeah, take that off, and then very gently, as I say, these do snap. So go easy. a bit of a twist first and a bit of a pull at the same time. See how it's going to come off. It's not because <clears throat> the pipe is so so hard on me. I'll get a pair of uh, my Nipex snips and very very gently just try and nick the side of it. But don't go mad. As I say they do snap and I've had them snap. Just ask Pete Fraddle about his lawnmower. They do snap. <clears throat> I had to drill and tap it and put a Honda Honda jet carb in there to act as a fuel line. So just go easy. All I'm doing is trying just try and nip down the side of that fuel line without actually cutting <coughs> into the aluminium. There it goes. 
part saved. <clears throat> so that can go into there. It just saved them sitting on the bottom, bottom of the solid cleaner out of the way. I've got another big main jet here, which I want to put in as well. Now that's not a main jet, that's already gone in. I've got a piece here that needs to go in, which is part of the throttle assembly. That's got to go into a wash. That's gone in, and I think that's it. All, all the main parts, another jet there needs to go in. So everything's going in. Okay, the screen can go in as well. So all your bits and pieces now in a ni nice solid place, they can't fall out, good to go. So there's no more bits to go in there other than just a few fibre washers and what have you, so I'm happy with that. <coughs> that I'm now going to my ultrasonic cleaner for around about 30 to 40 minutes each side. I, I take it out halfway through after 20 minutes and um, turn it over after 20 and it goes in for 40 total. So let me put it into my ultrasonic cleaner and I'll come back to you when it's done. Okay, carburetor is now done. Uh, it's had um, 20 minutes each side, nice and clean, it's nice and hot, so I've got a rag out. This is going to take some of this excess water out and give the old carb just a bit of a clean. It's come up beautiful. There's not a mark on it. Come up really, really nice and clean, which is what you want. Especially as I'm going to sell this carburetor anyway. So just removing any loose debris in here. I'm trying to identify the number. Now I said it was a um, 379, didn't I? I think it might be the 379121. It's normally on here somewhere. It's not on that one. I might be on this piece. Let's give it a dry. And I also get a bit of a blow off with an air gun in a minute as well, get all the water out, out the centre. There's the numbers. Normally on here. Oh, there it is. Yeah, 379121 is the, name of, is the number of a carburetor on here, so that's cool. Now, a good visual check of a carb, and it looks to be in good condition. Now, the alley is, is, quite, is, is quite old, okay? See? You need to just double check if you're going to sell it as complete, that like you're selling it as complete in good condition. Now I had pitting on mine, um, and um, I didn't. I didn't come to light until I actually filled it with some petrol. So I had a quick, good visual check. There's nothing in there that tells me. Is there any pitting in this carb at all? It actually looks to be in good condition too. Even the even the bowl chamber looks fantastic. So that all looks good. <clears throat> Happy with that. Here's our tub of bits and bobs that we put in. And each part will be cleaned separately and blown through with an air compressor. Don't lose no bits, Mick. Get me airline. Happy with that. There's a float. Yep. Uh, the main jet. This is running from feel it. And now I can see daylight all the way through, which I couldn't see beforehand. So we're happy with that. So I'm selling it as a as a as a complete working carb, so. There's no pitting down in there. We're happy with that. There's a screen, I'll just blow that through separately. There's another jet there. Look at the hole on that jet. Do you look at the size of it? Look at that. Hey, we didn't want about emissions back in them days. <laughs> you got to go quite a way out of your way to get one of them blocked up. All the other bits and pieces, they're all good, they're good to go. No more bits there, that I can get rid of. And then we've got a couple of smaller bits here which went into the um, into the little clamshells. As I say, the parts of tools that I use can be found within my comment section. If you're looking for a few spare parts, or you're thinking, oh, that's a good idea, I'll, I'll get one of them. Well, there's a link in the comment section under tools that I use. So feel free to go and check that out. There's a top piece. 
and a bottom piece. Again, let me blown off. A little tiny fibre wash of air. Give that a clean with a rag. So when someone opens it up, you know, it's, ne it's never going to be as good as new because, you know, these are 50, 60 years old. And what I might do with that, I might just put that onto my, uh, onto my wire wheel very quickly just to clean that up. I'll show you another bit I've done earlier on today. Let me show you that. So just put it onto my wire wheel. There's the old uh, Amel, made in jolly old England. There it is there, uh, Birmingham. Our black country where my mate Dick come from. And also this is the, um, the uh, it's not an air filter, it's, a, it's an oil filter, okay? Um, there's a cover for that as well. It says on there, Amel to clean, prize off cover, wash element pad in petrol and re-oil, support body when replacing cover. So that's come up nice and clean to put on the old alley, on the old wire wheel as well. So super happy with that. The only one thing to do is double check with this there's a little tiny hole here, which is actually an overflow, okay? Make sure that, that's running. Which it is, yep, yeah, that's running. Because if, if your float stays up, then your fuel's got to come out from somewhere. You might get a bit of noise now, because it's absolutely lashing down here on the old south coast, and I mean, it is giving it bags. Right. <clears throat> To reassemble is, is very, very simple, actually. You've got your little tiny oil screen here, which I have cleaned out as well, with a bit of petrol as described. That goes down on first, sink that in. And a little tiny fiber wash of air, that go, or, or textile washer, that goes on top like so. And that's got to then have some oil put in there, which I shall do before I send it out anyway. So that, that's that bit quite, quite easily sorted. And then this piece here, all that does is that's just got to sit into that hole through there and be done up. That's all that's, that's, that's all that's got to do, okay? So that's quite simple. There's a gasket there as well to go on. That then sits into there, like so, and then just do, just do this nut up at the back, the one I showed to you before, remember that? So that's when I get my nut, I'm the adjustable. Just gonna do that up. Now you won't. You will see me not not hot, not wrenching on these. Once they're just up hand tight, that's as far as they're going, and the choke works fine as it should do. Pull to choke. Says on the side. So we're happy with that. I then want to get my um, my float. Now that pin's got to come back out of there. Just pulls out. Okay. You can then put your your float back in, and then you want to grab this thicker one out of two. There's two brass jets you're worried about. It's the bigger one. And this one here has got a little tiny seat on the inside of it, okay? And that pin goes on the inside of it like that. So your threads are here, and the, and the, the beveled end of this needle goes up through there. And all you're going to do is push that up through the back of a carb, loosely fit the threads in, and that will probably want a fibre washer just on there. Which should probably be that, that cookie there. and push that up in. All the way. So that's snugged home. Now all you've got to do now is just locate your, 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 your pin and your float. So your float will go in and then your pin, if you hold your float down without putting your finger right over the center, you'll get a needle straight in the, straight in the, in the, old, the old finger. That, that will hurt. And let's you just push that down just enough so you can get that float to sit in. You need to be a bit careful because you can just see it just creeping out through there now. But as I say, you might want to just get like a pair of um, a pair of uh, pliers or just to push that down, okay? <clears throat> At the same time, you might also want to put something in there just to hold, because that's quite a bit of travel distance up there. So you might want to get something just to put up in that hole, just to hold that, um, that pin in place. Okay, it's something quite small. Now what I tend to use when I do these is like a, I've got a, a crochet needle, which I used to take out a mulching tube, just slide that up in, 
okay, and hold that into place like so. About to stop that needle coming down and push the needle all the way up to the top, you see. And then you can then just push your, your float down on top like so, and that's it. Just double check you are actually in the groove, which I am. So there it is there. So there's your float there, and that, that'll move up and down uh, in accordance, so that's good. Let's just put all this back in, it's just popped out. Come here. That's your oil bath. Let's put that back in. That's the size it wanted to come out. That one. So that's all now in place. We're happy with that. You can then fit your um, your oil screen cover on top. That just sits on there like that. And now we're down at the bottom side of the carburetor, where we have this uh, this main jet. Okay, and we also have uh, a screen to go on as well. Now the screen will go uh, on last, okay, that go over top, and your flat head driver piece will go in last, okay? So just offer it into place, you'll find it, and get a little tiny twist, and it'll start to seat. There it goes. Now if you're not, if you're not happy with it, then just take it out, get a bit of WD-40, or a bit of lube, just, just, give, just give it a bit of attention, <clears throat> it's only a very, very small thread. And the last thing I want to do is to, is to snap this now. Now we've gone through all the trouble of cleaning it. And just slowly work it back in. That's going quite nice, that is. And you'll feel it when it goes home. So you haven't got to go all the way home and, and, and pull on it. You'll feel it, when it once it sits. So it's sat there. So just give that just a little top, the, the tiniest of tweaks. That's enough. A very, very small brass jet is that, and you don't want to be mucking about with it too much. Your screen then can go over the top. I'll just get my pocket rocket and give it a quick little clean off blast. Just make sure I haven't picked anything else up. And then your screen can go over the top. That sits down onto there like so. This one here, this little tiny cover, that just goes straight on top. It doesn't have anything else other than a fibre washer to hold that into place. That up hand tight. <coughs> you then got um, this side here, you've got uh, your throttle cover here, which goes on like so. You'll have a very, very small flat style nut like this, and that requires a little tiny fibre washer to go on top of that. And that will then just screw in very, very gently into there, and that goes around the back, or, or it actually goes around the front actually when you're, when you're hooking it up to the petrol. That'll be done up like so. Onto the top cover, you have your where your float system is, you'll have your overflow, which is this little tiny hole just here. I always make sure that mine is, is, round, is round, the, round the this side of the carburetor so you can actually see it leaking out if it does. And all you've got to do is put this little tiny piece here over the top of your float needle just there. That's all you have to do. So just put it into place, make sure it sits over top, and then you just line it up. And you've got two very, very small flathead um, bolts. They go in, and we're going to slowly nick them up. Now anyone that is going to buy this carburetor, I would like to think is either well in the know, and they, they know exactly what they're buying, and therefore they know how to strip them down. Okay, but this is for, this video is for the novice who thought, do you know what, I might just do it on those myself. Bit of spare time, I wouldn't mind restoring one, so this video is for you. <clears throat> Once that's all in place, we're, we're then only left with a couple of bits. That is, one is your is your throttle assembly uh, with the spring. We've also got your uh, fuel mixture screw, which goes here. Tell me, there it is, hiding. Now I left my locking nut just where where it needs to be. So all I'm going to do with that is just just going to wind that in. and just do that up. You generally find they're about two and a half turns, I would say, on the fuel mixer screw. There's no point even trying to mix it until your engine is running anyway. And that'll just well seat, just like so. Okay, I might just give it a little tiny nick with a um, flat head, uh, with an adjustable, just to make sure it's well seated. Like so. And then you can then adjust adjust your your screw as, as necessary on your on your carby, okay, like so. <clears throat> I 
I'm out of pocket rocket. No. Good. That's that part done. And now the last part, I believe, you've got to put your top hat on, but first of all, we've got to put this little tiny throttle mechanism in um, and your spring on top. So this bit goes in first, and don't forget, you'll have your throttle cable attached to this when you, when you go to reinstall it. That goes in. Now, there's, I think there's a little tiny recess right down the very, very bottom of these, and that is where this little tiny groove will sit. Okay, and the groove is located in line with, with, with this fuel mixture jet. That's where it's located, okay? So it goes in, and you might just have to just give it a bit of tweezing just to get it into place. So that it goes, it's gone in. Your spring can go on top, there it goes. And then your top hat can go on top of that. Is that clean? Yeah, it's cleanish. Let's give it a quick little wipe. Yeah, that's clean. Let's give it a quick little air blow as well. So there's a little bit of residue in there, but that's now nice and clean. And then your top hat can then sit straight on top of that. That can then screw down. These threads are very, very fine threads, so go very, very careful. And there you go. And that is how I take apart, and you've got, you've got, you've got your little bolt there to put onto your, onto your engine, onto your recall system, but don't need that because we're not selling it with it. That is how I um, take apart, reassemble, and clean one of the AML um, 379-121 carburetors or similar, <coughs> which fit to the Ransom Marquis 18 or 20 inch um, lawnmowers, which are now completely obsolete. So there you go. Uh, very simple, very quick, very easy. Um, they just take a bit more time because of, of, of the age of the carburetor. The carburetors are not a young carburetor at all. Uh, what year are these? 19... 1960s. Um, they changed over to the um, solid state ignition about 83, something like that. But yeah, they're about 1960s, uh, 70s, these carburetors. Um, I haven't found any other markings on this carburetor to give it a date, but um, I can probably find it on the, on the lawnmower. But uh, there's nothing to say that this carburetor came off of a different lawnmower in the first place. So anyway, that carburetor is now done, fully working, as it should do. Um, and it, it, I would say in good condition, um, rather, than, rather than just fair. Uh, but that's how you clean them. They are a very, very simple carburetor to do. Um, just make sure that, you, obviously, you, you can't take these bits apart until you take this main bolt out the back to separate the carburetor up. But... That's how you do that. So hopefully you enjoyed a little episode of Mixed Mowers and Mower Man on how to clean a Ransom Marquis um, AML 379-121 carburetor. There's no, not many videos out on how to do it, but hopefully this video will help you. If you want to buy me, Mrs. P or Riley Boy a little present for Christmas, then please feel free to do so. My AMS and Wish Inc is down below in the pinned comment section or in my About pages. Hit the link and go shopping and uh, we'll do a video opening session if we get any presents coming nearer to Christmas. And if you like this little episode of Mixed Mowers and Mowers Man, hit your subscribe button, whack the old bell, set your notifications to all. That way you'll be told one's on a video or two on my Saturday night weekly live stream, which starts at 6.30 p.m. UK time. Speaking of live streams, on the 18th of December will be my celebrity live stream, which starts at 6.30 p.m but the main event will start at eight o'clock at night. So feel free to come along and uh, cheer in and uh, get involved with all the top celebrities within the small engine world across um, YouTube, where I'll be hosting the live stream on the 18th of December. I look forward to the next episode of Mixed Mars very, very soon. But until then, don't forget, much more importantly, take it easy.